30. Twenty.
10. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to another beautiful Sunday where we get to gather together. I feel like I should say welcome home. You know, there's a, a thought that we were once orphans. We once felt like the outcasts. Maybe you were the black sheep of your family. But here together in the in the presence of God, you have a home. You are accepted, you are complete, you are made whole. So today we just pray with open hearts and open minds that God would be able to have his way to do what only he can do. Today we choose to acknowledge, not only do we call him a mountain moving God, not only do we call him a miracle worker, not only do we call him the God of the impossible, but we believe it. So whatever it is that is in our lives, the chaos, the worries, the fears, the hurts, the pains, the grieving and the sorrow, the fear, mental health issues, physical pain, whatever it is that is trying to hold you down. We choose to surrender that to the mountain moving miracle God that loves us to our core. Father God, you are welcome here in this place. You're welcome in this building. You are welcome on this street corner. You are welcome in this city. And you are welcome in the hearts of your people. We pray, God, that the sounds that are about to escape our mouths are a sweet, sweet sound to your ears. That you feel acknowledged, loved, and lifted on high. We love you, Father, so, so, so much. Thank you, Jesus. If there hadn't been a darkness, I would have never seen the light. I wouldn't long for sunrise if it wasn't for the night. If there hadn't been a father, way when there was none I'd still be an orphan if it wasn't for his son there hadn't been a grave if there hadn't been a cross my heart would still be buried my soul would still be lost if there hadn't been a saved who died to make a way I'd still be a dead man if there hadn't been a grave oh, if it wasn't for the breaking I would never know the man I wouldn't know the sweetness of freedom if I didn't know my sin and hadn't been forgiveness that covered all my shame, oh, I'd still be a debtor if he didn't take my place. If there hadn't been a grave, if there hadn't been a cross, my heart would still be buried and my soul would still be lost there hadn't been a savior who died to make a way 
tries to be a dead man There hadn't been a grave There hadn't been a grave There hadn't been a grave Let's sing hallelujah
is running my way. I know I am yours. I was made for more. And I wasn't made, cause I wasn't made to be tending a grave when I was called by name. Born and raised back to life again. I was made for more, so why would I, so why would I make a bed in my shame when a fountain of grace is running my way? I know I am yours, and I was made for more. We're singing hallelujah. to life again I was made for more yes I was so why would I be why would I make a bed in my shame when a fountain of grace is running my way I know I am yours and I was made for more I wasn't born to called my name born and raised back to life again I was made for more thank you Jesus so why so why would I make a bed in my shame when a fountain of grace is running my way I know I am yours and I was made for more we have freedom in you jesus there's freedom in you jesus there's freedom in you jesus hallelujah freedom in you jesus in faith because wherever you've been has not been where God wants you to be. Whatever you're holding on to is not what God wants you to have. If you've been stuck in a place where you feel like you can't escape, you will never change. You have to step out. God is ready and willing to take your hand. But he's going to be patiently waiting for you to take that first step. Freedom is freely accessible when our lives are in God's hands. Step out. Step out of the shadows. Step out of the grave. 
break into the wild and don't be afraid run into wide open spaces grace is waiting for you dance like the weight has been lifted grace is waiting where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is healing there is freedom let there be freedom Bring all of your burdens, bring all of your scars, come back to communion, come back to the stars, run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you, dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. There is freedom where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of His love where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom, let there be freedom. This is where we declare in Jesus' name, whatever is trying to weigh you down, in Jesus' name, let it be gone. May you be a brand new creation in this very moment. Chains will fall, prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name.
to acknowledge that you need freedom today and step out with me. When you step into the front of the room, you are making a declaration that you don't want to be where you've been. It means you don't care what everybody else thinks because you want freedom so bad. You're going to step out regardless of how it feels. If you feel ashamed, guess where the best place to be is? In the presence of the Lord. If you're scared, guess where the best place to be is? With Jesus. So you make this declaration to acknowledge that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So I choose to come out of that dark place to find freedom. I need freedom. In Jesus' name, and shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Where the Spirit you to pull them out into the light God we want to be filled with who you are and not who we are and not who Satan is we want to be filled with your goodness your joy your peace your love your mercy Jesus. The so Melissa Melissa said are you afraid that dropped in my spirit is in Matthew 6 and Jesus said are you afraid therefore I tell you do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you, who were created in His image, are not more valuable than them? I 
was Thank you, Jesus. with a beautiful woman today. And it was the first time I ever witnessed and ever saw in my life a woman waiting to fall asleep and to be with Jesus. I had never seen that in my life. And what I hear God say is that she wasn't asking for stuff. She wasn't asking for material things. She was asking and calling out family members. Because in Matthew 6, 19, 21 says, don't store up treasures on earth. Don't store up the things of this world that tells you that you need it. Things that rob your joy, things that rob your peace. Don't store up treasures here on earth where they can erode away or be stolen. Store them in heaven. Store your treasures in heaven. Store your family in heaven. Store your finances in heaven. Store your husband in heaven. Store those things cannot give you what he can give you because at the end we're not going to be calling for our car at the end of our life we're not going to be saying I need money to survive at the end we're not going to say remember that box that I have in the garage remember the tools going to be thinking about I can't wait to see you Jesus I can't wait to be just like you I can't wait because my pain will be gone my sadness will be gone my stress will be gone my fear will be gone and I will be completely whole Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. 
Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me.
now. God is calling you for your heart's desire. I see we got some men up here, we got some women up here, we got some kids up here. But God is calling our families up here. I sense the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I want you to come as families today. And men, you lead the way and say, Come. This is what I want for my home. This is what I want for my family. This is what I want for my children. Not come rest on me, but come rest on us. Come rest on our home. Come rest on my children. Come rest on my wife. Come rest on my husband. I want you to come as families today. Come on, the Spirit of the Lord is calling you. He wants to set a fire in your home. He wants to set your children on fire. He wants to set your husbands on fire. He wants to set your wives on fire. He wants to set your mothers on fire. But let's come as families today. Come rest on us. Come rest on us, God. We need you today. Move those chairs back. I want people to come on up here. Come on up as families, your brothers, your sisters today. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Yes, amen. Sakala, take it out. Come on, let's lift up our hands. Come rest on us. Hold hands with your family, with your children, with your spouses today. Oh, Holy Spirit, we need you, Lord.
ourselves and in that we have failed you in the most basic commandments Lord so we come our hearts are full of song but our hearts are also full of repentance and sadness Lord we want to be right as families we want to be right as husbands we want to be right as wives we want to be right as children we want to be right as the family of God we want more of you Lord so we surrender, I surrender, God. The heart of life church surrenders today. And have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Let there be salvation in the house. Let there be freedom in the house. Let there be transformation, not tomorrow, but today, not later on, but right now, God. Oh, I need you, Lord. We need you. Lord, Lord, we surrender, I surrender, Lord.
church. This is how I fight my battle. Through surrender, battle. through repentance, through this praise, through worship. For the weapons of our this warfare are not carnal, but they are spiritual. This they are mighty. We are winning right this now. This is how I fight my battle. You are battle. a winner in Jesus Christ. This Tantana. is how I fight my battle. Oh yeah. This is This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight. We won. This is how we won our battles. This is how we won our battles. This is how we won our battles. This is how we. to do church don't be surprised this is good don't be afraid but enter in do you love him today do you sense his praise do you sense his presence and his power and his promise today isn't this good we love you my Jesus we love you, my Lord. Stay open, friends. Stay open. You continue to give God a little space, a little room, and watch what he does in you, in your home, in your family, in your children. He's a good God. He's worthy to be praying. Man. We're going to let the people continue to pray up here, but those of you out there, I want you to just turn to two or three people sitting around and let them know God's doing some things. Come on now. Come on, God's doing some things. Come on. Turn to somebody else. God's doing some things. God's doing some things. Come on, testify. El Señor la está haciendo. God's doing some things. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, say, yeah, yeah, say. My beautiful Jesus, how I love you. My heart sings to you today. I'm free today. Jesus set me free. And I like it. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And I love Him. Come on, let me hear you say, God's doing some things, church. God's doing some Come on, God's doing some things, right? Oh, yeah. I love you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord. 
I love you, Lord, that where you are, there's life, there's liberty, there's joy, God. Joy, 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 joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, my Jesus. Those of you who are standing, you may be seated. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to let them pray. Welcome to Life Church, where people come back to life, where families are united, where lives are transformed, where we find purpose in Jesus Christ, where we come alive. God's doing some things. God's doing, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. God's doing some things. Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, I love you with all of my heart, all of my mind, and all of my strength. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you. I know we've been standing for a little bit. I think we got one more song, man. I think, do we have one more? I think y'all have one more we there. Have one. We can have one more. We have one more, right? And so listen, I mean, let's enjoy his presence. I'm not in a rush. We're on his time this morning. We're on his time. I say we sing one more worship song. And, and then Pastor Rudy's going to come up after that, man. He's got a couple of... But you can be seated if you want, man. You can chill. I know we stand here, but feel free to sit as we worship today. Woo! This one's called Lion. God of Jacob, the great I am, King of angels, Son of man, the voice of many waters, the song of heaven's throne, louder than the thunder, make your glory known. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the light. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the lion roar. Roar, roar, roar. Pride of Zion.
across this city. Break some chains. Thank you, Lord. Thank Woo! Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. God is good. And we should get up roaring. And I'm not talking about to your wife or at your husband or at the kids. But let the enemy know that you're out of bed. Literally out of bed. We have a quick announcement. This Friday night, we have an awesome opportunity for the couples in this church to get together. And if you have a a, a family friend that is married and want to bring them, bring them. This is going to be at our house. This, this is our first night. It starts at uh, 6.30. Ends at midnight. Don't know. We're going to give it a roar. You know what? I know there's people around our, our house that needs to hear the roar of the Holy Spirit. My wife and I, have, uh, this has been on my heart for some time, and my wife and I have decided to start this ministry for the couples to get together. We're going to have food fellowship and a, 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 some word. It's not going to be at the same house every every month. It's the last Friday night of every month that was set apart for this. So I, I want you singles to be praying that you someday become a part of this. See, we're laying the groundwork for you. Amen. There's going to be food fellowship. Food says a lot. So if you want directions, or no, make sure you have one of these before you leave today, okay? These are the invitations. Our phone number is on here if you need directions. The gate code and all that, we'll give it to you. And uh, we're going to have a good time, a good party in the name of Jesus. Amen? Why? Because we love Jesus and we love each other. Amen. Pastor Rudy. One more time. Roar. Come on, you can't get enough of that. Roar. Hallelujah. Woo, I don't know about you, but my God, Jesus is in the house. <laughs> All the glory, honor, and praise belongs to him. Are you blessed today? Tell your neighbor, I am blessed. <laughs> praise oh. God. I got the honor and privilege to do the announcement of man camp real quick. Can I talk to the men for a moment? Oh, you know what? Let me talk to the women because you need to encourage your husband to be part of this. We got 24 men signed up so far. And wow. there was a prophetic word given this morning in the upper room. We meet here in the morning and we pray and God speaks to us. And Pastor David gave a word on behalf of what's going to happen at man camp. And part of that word was the roaring of the lion. But what I loved was they called me in the center to stand in the gap for the men that will be going. And they begin to lay hands on me. And Pastor David prophesies that there is going to be a fire on the top of the hill. Come on, somebody. There's going to be a mountaintop experience awaiting the men of God that show up hungry, that show up broken, that show up willing, that just show up. And I had a vision and I saw where Ezekiel said, Lord, let them see that they are not alone and when they opened their eyes they saw chariots of fire and warring angels surrounding the mountain top come on somebody and the fire awaits you and i as men of god the women you gotta have a yard sale don't get your nails done let the hair grow out do what you gotta do to support your man of god so he can go to the mountain top and he can come down like Moses, shining for the honor and the glory of God and be the priest of the house and bless his wife and bless his children and train them up in the way that they should go and give the devil a stinking black eye and say, not today, Satan. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you, Lord. For more information, see myself, see Brother Ray, see Brother Albert. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. Praise the Lord. Man, you guys feel the fire? 
Man, there's fire in the house of God. You know, one time Brother Albert said, we went to the man's camp, but how do you bring back a fire with a church that's already on fire? True story. True story. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Thank you for coming to TLC. And the Life the, Church. The youth. Thanks to all our online family. We love you. We miss you. We hope and pray all is well. We'd love to embrace you. Praise the Lord. So I have the honor to pick up today's offering. If you need an envelope, there should be some on your seats. If not, raise your hand. Our ushers are ready and they are on post. Also, we have an online giving at TLC Facebook or our website, TLCVicelia.com. If this is your first time, Okay, we want you to get that connect card also on your chair or next to you. If you don't have one, raise your hands. And we want you to fill it out. You know why? We want to connect with you. We want to get your phone number and we want to get on your nerves. Hey, I'll tell you what. If you don't know me, you give me your number. Oh, I'm going to blow you up. I'm going to text you scriptures. I'm going to text you invites. Uh, I'm like better than the Dear Abbey News on the front of the ad. I want to get your attention because God has a purpose for you and me today. Praise the Lord. So fill out the connect card. And in the back, there's a table to my right on the corner. And if it's your first time, we got a present for you. Who don't like some free stuff, right? Come on now. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask the ushers. Praise the Lord. Real quick, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. For if the willingness is there stop there for a moment I'm talking about your pocket I'm talking about your purse I'm talking about the stash in your sock okay all that will do no good if there's no willingness behind it see Corinthians says you're better off not giving if you give with a grudging heart some, some churches say don't you ever say that behind the pulpit because they won't give well they don't know how to trust in God Come on, somebody. They don't know how to trust things. This is God's church. We are God's people. And he will use God's people to provide for the life church. Because you and me got families and loved ones and friends that belong in those empty seats next to you and next to me. But you see, the willingness. Deuteronomy says, I give you a choice. We got a loving, compassionate God, but he's a gentleman. But he does a lot with choice. So the scripture is giving you and me a choice. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has. How many believe in the tithe? How many know that it's biblical? So I've learned this in my walk. You're going to hear all these theologians and these scholars. Well, the tithe is not in the New Testament. Get out of here. Come on, now, do you know what that is? I'll be honest with you. If I'm offending somebody, I'm sorry, but I'm really not. It's a cop-out. Come on, somebody. See, the Bible says give what is in your heart. Well, where do we get the understanding? In the Word. Bring a tenth into the storehouse, and the nations will call you blessed. That's the word I stand on. I want the world to see me as a man of God, you as children of God, being blessed. So they'll say, wow. I don't know their God, but if he takes care of people like that, I'd sure like to get to know him. See, it's a testimony, and people need to see that. But if we don't fall under the scripture, and we don't have a willingness, and the gift is not acceptable, then what is the world going to see? Bitter, lemonade drinking Christians. We don't want that. Come on, somebody. Now, I like lemonade, but I'll add a couple extra cups of sugar. You know what I mean? Somebody knows where I'm going with this. So he says, a, a gift is acceptable according to what one has, not to what he does not have. See, I know how the devil works. You don't have enough. You can't afford to give. You better not do it because you got bills. You know, the Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask for it. Whenever we give, we should be wise, but we should give according to what the word says, not the world, not even your circumstance. Okay, I'm going to talk to you real quick, and then I'm going to close. Brothers and sisters. I've learned this in my walk. If you're struggling financially, you need to ask God to check your heart. I'm going to give you a quick financial teaching. Are you overspending? Honest question, right? Am I spending above my means? Can I afford to do what I want to do? Or can I plan and do it later, God willing? 
Okay, so I say that to say you and I have to ask God to help us. He's not saying give me your electric bill and a check will magically appear. No, you're going to be in the dark. Come on, somebody. And it's going to be hot because your AC is not going to work. Yeah, that's a life in the pits of hell. We're here to speak a truth to encourage God's people how to be good stewards of the money that belongs to him. He's the father of all life that gives all good things to his children. So I challenge you today, as the ushers make their way forward, to search your heart. This isn't a condemning message. We have to teach God's people how, what God expects from us in order to be blessed. So maybe you are struggling financially. You know what the world said? Plan, save, lie, steal, deny. You know what the Bible says? Give your way out. What little you have, you can plant it in fertile ground. The life church is fertile ground. Because God showed up already, didn't he? And we hadn't even planted. Let's pray. Father in heaven, glory, honor, and praise belongs to you. Bless every man, every woman, every individual who's giving. And bless the one who's not. Because I know you're steering them up because they want to. So that means you will provide, Father. Your name is Jehovah Jireh, the God of provisions. Meet every need. Multiply this, Father. So these doors can stay wide open. And God's people can have a place of refuge. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, give Jesus a round of applause and welcome our Pastor Henry in the house. Glory, glory, glory. said in your word that uh, that in your presence Lord is the fullness of joy with the joy of knowing you today. Lord, my heart was moved, Lord, when I saw our families up here, God. When I saw the men, Lord, with their arms around their spouses and their wives around their husbands and their children. My heart was moved earlier in the service, God, when I saw men surrounding men and women surrounding women. I thank you that we're not alone. I thank you that you haven't called us to do life alone because life alone can be so hard, Lord. But you've given us this body, Lord, this community, life, church. This is my family, Lord. I feel a sense of joy when they're sad, Lord, my heart is sad. I thank you that we have one another, Lord. I thank you that we have your Holy Spirit.
I thank you that we have your life. I thank you that we have your word, God. Your word brings freedom. Your word brings healing. Come and do, Lord, what I can't do. You got to speak to those secret places in our heart by your word. We need to hear from you. We don't church doesn't need to hear another preacher, another man. Fill my mouth with your words today. That your word may bring transformation, healing, and life. See it, Donna. yield myself to you Holy Spirit I thank you for everything that you've said and done already you're so good you're so so good so good so good so good mi arma te alaba y te glorifica Padre my heart Precious Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's good in God's presence, right? Oh my goodness. You know, we used to sing that song that said, uh, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. And, and, and that part of, uh, of Israel, they'd be really dry, 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 dry times. And so the wildlife it had to really search for water but they with pants in other words if I don't drink I will die and they'd find that water in certain cracks and crevices but they had to look hard. Don't stop. Don't stop seeking. Don't stop searching. It gets hard sometimes. We're a church that knows that. I'm a man that knows that. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask. Don't give up. Don't give up. So. 
last week, week before, we ended with a story where uh, there was a man, you know, who was just caught up, man, with demons. He was demon possessed. And so we read that Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee, across the lake, to find him. They went through a storm and it looked like the boat was going to sink and the disciples were scared. But and Jesus wasn't scared. Jesus ain't scared of anything. Jesus was on a mission. And he was on a mission to find one person to set that person free. And he found them. We went through that. But this morning, uh, I was out on my walk. I was thinking, who's that one person who's going to be here today where everything that's happened and everything that's done and everything that's said is for you? And you're here. And so is he. Don't miss him. Don't leave here the same. Jesus Christ has a mad crush on you. Back in the day, we used to call Holy Spirit the hound dog of heaven. You say, Pastor Henry, you that old? Yes, well, I'm getting up there. I'm not an old man, but I'm an older man. I ain't going to lie. Man, but there's so much going on in the spirit realm, in the invisible. You know it. There's something in your heart. There's something in your head. There's, it's someone and he's drawing you. And he ain't doing it with a big stick. He ain't doing it. No. All of us are so uniquely different. Some of you he's doing he, with music. Some of you with a joke. Some of you with just that sense that God is here. Let him do it. Right? Let him do it. Because God is God. And he's good at it. Come on, let me hear you say, God is God. And he's good at it. Come on, one more time. God is God. And he's good at it. One more time. God is God. And he's good at it. Come on, give him a hand of praise. Oh, yeah. Also, oh, listen, I do look. I got, we got a little bag. This, is, this got some cool stuff in it. Look. Woo, we got a candy. Oh, I'm, I bet, man, that triggered my hunger. I shouldn't have pulled that out. Uh, no, it's got some cool stuff. It's got some stickers. It's got some, oh, oh, look, some, what is this, sanitizer? Oh, man, it's got one of my favorite mini books in the whole world. Purpose Driven Life, we've done this together as a church. So if you're a guest today, man, we got an awesome gift for you. And so uh, you just stop by. You need to fill out that, com that uh, card and take it back there to the table. Sister Gloria, I'm going to ask you at the end of the service because Deborah, uh, it? Brenda and, and Daniel aren't here. If you would... Just wave to the congregation right now. That's Sister Gloria. She'll be back there. She'll trade your card for one of these. All right. You don't want to miss that. Because uh, we love connection at the church. All right. And then we got one more thing here. And I'm going to listen. We, you know when we do it at, at, at Life Church, uh, we, we, do, we do it big because we do it for Jesus. You know. And hey, man, we're going to be dedicating some babies, some children. Uh, if you have, uh, have children or babies that need to be dedicated, all right, uh, we got this back here. It's going to be on August 4th. That's in two weeks, 
All right, say two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks you want to be sure and sign up because so, we do get some really cute little things for the kids and uh, for your babies, and we're growing, you know, yeah. we're growing. And so, uh, Pastor, what we're going to do, we're going to put this on the back table there. We're going to, oh, I'm going to pass it around. Does anybody want to start with this? Okay, so listen, what we're going to do, we're going to pass it around, pass it around. While I'm going ahead, you're going to start it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put you this in charge, all right? Let, raise your hand because she's going to see who you are and she's going to come back. Look, oh my goodness, all over the house, all right? All right. All right. Oh, hey, and also there's a list back there. We're going to be doing some baptisms. If you have not been water baptized, immersion, can I see your hands? If you have not been baptized. All right, we got one. I know there's some other. Don't hide. Two, three. All right, listen, we're going to have a body thing baptism. We usually have a nice uh, a barbecue and a baptism, but I ain't going to, I'll tell you about it next week, all right, because we got a lot going on. But, uh, don't be missing next week because you don't want to be baptized. I will come and get you. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. No, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to be with you today. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I love what God's doing in me first <laughs> and what he's doing in you, what he's doing in us. It's, uh, it's amazing. And you say, hey, somebody's visiting and you say, hey, is it like this all the time? Uh, I tell you, but I might scare you. Come and see, man. You know what we say in CR? Keep coming back. Right? We say keep coming back. So, uh, man, I have prayed, right? And so look what the Bible says right here. We are, and so, all right, Jesus said mission accomplished. He took care of the demoniac at the garrison, right? He took care of that mission accomplished. Man, he left that guy, man, and he was out as... He wasn't filled with demons anymore. He was filled with the good news. It says, look what the Lord. You know what? He was going into town singing. You can turn me down a little bit. Look what the Lord has done. Come on. Look what the Lord has done. Heal my body. Touch my mind. He said me it was just in time. Oh, I'm going to pray his name. Ba, ba, ba. I don't know that he was doing it just like that. But no, he wanted to stay and he wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus says, no, you go back. Go home. Go home and tell them what I've done for you. So he might have done I don't know if he might have done I mean, if I, oh, yeah. Don't trigger me. I love that song. And we all called. To spread the good news. You know, don't forget every time you leave that door going on your way out to look up, man, because it says you are now entering the mission field because we got work to do. Come on, let me hear you say, we got work to do. Come on, turn to the person next to you. Yeah, we got work to do. Right? We got work. This don't stop. This is, my mother used to tell me when I first got saved, she said, at the full time, no part time. It's a full time, not part time. We got work to do. People need the Lord. And we know that, man. We got a church full of people who have found Christ and come back to God right here. And so God saves us so we can reach other people. This is a fueling place. It's like a, a, a gas station or a Holy Spirit filling station. What do you think all this stuff is? All of this power, all of this promise, all of this song, all of this freedom. You think it's just for you? No. Jesus fills us to capacity so that wherever we bump into somebody, it spills over. All right? It spills over. Hey, we got work to do. People need the Lord. 
Don't forget that in the end, anyone who dies without Jesus Christ will be damned to an eternal hell. And let me hear you say, that's some serious stuff right there. That's some serious stuff right there. So I'm in Luke chapter 8. It was mission accomplished. He took care of the, he, he cast the demons out of, the, uh, uh, of that guy. That man was cutting himself and was living in the tombs. But Jesus Christ set him free, gave him a new lease on life, turned his life around forever. Can I hear you say forever? All right. So now we read, I'm in Luke, and we're going to try to finish Luke chapter 8 today, all right? I know we've been in this chapter for almost a little more than a month. We we should, (laughs) that's right, we should get through it today. We should get through it. So the Bible says, I'm in verse 40 of Luke chapter 8. It says, so it was when Jesus returned, the multitude welcomed him. What did they do? Now, he said when he returned, he's talking about mission accomplished, coming back now over the sea, or over the lake of Galilee. He handled some business over there, but once the business was, he came back, and probably to Capernaum. That was his new kind of home base, not his hometown, but that's where his ministry, the base of ministry was, all right? It appeared, it, it appeared to be that's where he was. And it says, all right, check it out. It says that the multitude, what? They welcomed him. Say welcomed him. All right, he, man, he was the toast of the town right there. At this point in his ministry, man, people were talking about Jesus. Jesus was doing some things. It says that they welcomed him for they were, what? Waiting for him. What were they doing? Waiting for him. How many of y'all were waiting for him this morning? Uh, We need to come into this house waiting for God to do something. Anticipating. Expecting. All right? We are in a room right next door to here. It's not the upper room. It's the side room. All right? We meet there every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. And we wait for him there. We welcome Holy Spirit there. This don't happen by happenstance. Somebody is praying for you. Somebody is praying that God would touch you. That God would fill you. That God would meet you at your place of need. No, somebody is praying for you. And you can come with us and pray for somebody else. Every Sunday morning, that's our pregame in there, pregame of prayer. All right, let's see. So the Bible says, whoop, flip the page. The Bible says that they welcomed him for they were all waiting for him. Continue to wait on the Lord. The Bible says those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Don't flop into the house of the Lord. God will meet you if you do. But no, come ready. Come expecting. Come, man, come. Waiting and welcoming. The Bible says, and behold, there came a man. His name was Jairus. And he was ruler of the synagogue. All right, this guy Jairus is ruler of the synagogue. What that means is he was like, in that time, he was like a pastor, all right? Uh, he was a pastor. He didn't take care of all of the ministry or the preaching of the word, or the, but he set, he set up the house, all right? He set up what the readings were going to be and who would, and he made sure the bills of the synagogue were paid, and he was kind of the overseer of the synagogue, all right, which was like a local church. Every city had a synagogue, all right? And so Jairus, I would say, was, a, was, a, was an important man. You know, in a Jewish community, he was, he, you know, he, they knew who Jairus was. He was a man with a position. He was a man of uh, uh, prestige, and he was a man of power, all right? He was, in other words, he, you know, he, he, has, he had it going on in a lot of ways, all right? And so the Bible says, that Jairus uh, was a ruler of the synagogue, 
And he fell down at the feet of Jesus and begged him. Say he begged him. Now what I want to make note of here is this guy had power. This man had position. This man had uh, prestige. But when it came to a crisis, he didn't have anything. It didn't matter the power, it didn't matter the prestige, it didn't matter the position. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because it said he was begging. Oh, snap. Begging. And listen, don't put all your eggs in the basket of power, prestige, position. No. He knew where to come. <laughs> I give that to him. He knew where to come, man, when the crisis hit. Because the word <laughs> had gotten out that the healer was back. And I want you to know that the healer is back. Not that he ever left, but maybe you did. <laughs> The Bible says he begged him to come to his house. Why? Verse 42. For he had an only daughter about 12 years old and she was dying. Get the picture? He had a 12-year-old daughter. It made me, this made me sad. Every time I read it, it makes me sad. That'll drive a man to his knees and that'll drive a man to Jesus. You got, you got one of your child, see, and especially a daughter, a little 12-year-old at that age. She's pretty cool. Once she's 13, drop her off at grandma's and pick her up when she's 19. I can say that because the youth is next door right now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let's tell the truth and shame El Diablo, right? Pray for Melissa. She's real good with the girls that age. If you got one that age, she does a girl's Bible study every Sunday. Lord, help her and touch her. That says you got a high calling. <laughs> Some of our little girls said amen back there. All right? So, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had only one, he had only daughter about 12 years old of age, and she was dying. But as he went, say as he went, right? As he went, the multitude thronged. What I want to say is right here, Jairus is starting to feel a little better. He's starting to feel a little better. Why? Because Jesus took on the assignment. Jesus, how do you know? He says, as he went. In other words, Jesus said, come on. Come on. He said, let's go. Let me hear you say, let's go. Right? When Jesus says, let's go, man, hey, man, something good is going to happen. So Jesus says, let's go. And they are on their way. But what? There's a but there, I think. Let's see. What did it say? Let me get back here. All right. Let's see what happened. Let's come back up here and say, Oh, uh, Jesus, and he fell, and fell down, blah, 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 for he had only one daughter. But as he went, the multitude thronged him. Something happened. Right now, once Jairus goes from up to man, up to man, sometimes life is like that. Sometimes, man, life is up, but what? Man. Obstacles. Jesus takes on the assignment. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the obstacles are going to go away. But you're not alone. If Jesus says, let's go, he is on it. You can trust him. He's going to find a way to get you to where you need to be. And what happens? It 
It says that the multitudes thronged him. That's the same word we looked at mm, last month sometime when we talked about uh, how uh, the, the thorns uh, throng, they, uh, they suffocate. All right, they suffocate with it. Remember with the, 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 the parable of sowing the seed and how, you know, one seed grows up and it grows, it, and the fer- ground is so fertile that it's growing, but there's like some thorns and the, the throng, all right? Um, and so there's, in other words, it's a suffocating Robert Crowd, all right? Uh, uh, thank you. You know I'm going to bump into that. Pastor Eva, she would have been up here already and moved it. She knows how I am. I like to move around a little bit. All right. So in other words, there's a a suffocating crowd. All right. Like if you go to a a football game or a baseball game or or you go to the mall at Christmas, man, and you're one of those little stores, you know, and you're like, "Mm." in other words, it's suffocating. All right. The crowd is, I just want you to get a picture of what's about to happen right here. Jesus takes on the assignment. He's ready to go see Jairus' daughter. But on his way, man, it's this, it's this obstacle. There's people. It's, he's like suffocated. There's people all around him, the Bible says. Then it says in verse 43, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all of her livelihood on physicians and uh, uh, could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. All right, here's a lady in crisis. Here's a lady in trouble. Here's a lady who needs a miracle. All right, she's in the crowd, but it's a, it, there's all kind of people everywhere. Now, Jairus has an issue. But so does the lady. I like in, uh, I think in Mark chapter 5, same story, all right? And I I, I like the way, I I like the way Mark puts it better. He says the same story. He says, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. This is Mark chapter 5, verse 25. And suffered many things from many physicians. Say many things, many physicians. All right, her issue, all right, wasn't just with the flow of, uh, irregular flow of blood, a, 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 a gynecological thing that ladies have. But it wasn't just that she had that. It she had many things, say many things, from many physicians. It wasn't just the physical. She had some people stuff going on. It wasn't just physical. No, it it appears that she was getting burned by people and burned by doctors. Maybe they were trying to do the right thing. Maybe they were trying to help her, but she wasn't able to get the help. It was many things by many Doctors, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? She had some people issues. She had some disappointments. She had some of life's hurts going her way. I would say for her, most of the physicians at that time were men. She had some men problems. Mm, Somebody's saying, hey, wait a minute, it doesn't say that. No, this just caught my eye as I was reading this morning. I wasn't even looking at this over here, but the Holy Spirit led me in that way. Well, I don't doubt there's some here, man, you're struggling with those type of things. For those of you who don't know, I, I, I had bipolar disorder. And when I first had my first bout with that thing, my first episode, man, I went to many doctors. I had a lot of disappointments. Everybody, they say that, man, uh, some of that work, and I can tell you as a, as a, you know, as a licensed counselor, I can tell you 
man, that uh, when it comes to mental health and those of you that may be having issues there, doctors really don't know how to treat you. It's more, they say it's a more of an art form than it is a science. And there's some things in life that we, they don't have answers for. But Jesus does. Jesus does. And what I wanted to say, and I'm going to get back to the story here, but I really felt to share that with you because this lady didn't just have a physical problem, but I believe she was soul sick. You know, and when we're soul sick, we turn to a lot of things to get, find our healing or our comfort or our, come on now, don't look at me that way. You know what I'm talking about today. When we're soul sick, she said, this lady went to doctors, all right, doctors. So we go to different doctors today when we're soul sick, doctor entertainment, doctor love, doctor self-medication. Dr. Romeo or Juliet, whichever, depending on who you are. No, we, we go to different things, different doctors when we're soul sick. And most of us have experienced that, no, though, none of that worked. And like her, man, we spent the fortune and we wind up broke. And yet, that's where Jesus met her, broke with an infirmity and probably soul sick. Now, he was, remember, we don't want to forget Jairus because that's where it looked like he was, he was going. But I want you to know that Jesus will stop everything. He'll stop the move of our service. That's why sometimes our service goes like that. It seems like a couple of y'all might get a little whiplash. What just happened? I thought we were singing. Now we're praying. Now is he crying? What's it? It's his church, not mine. And it's not, so, so here he was on going with Jairus, and all of a sudden now he's, and something is going on. Watch, let's keep reading. Let me go back to, let me go back to Luke chapter 8. It says, now the woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who, and you, if you want to read Mark chapter 5, it's the parallel story. There's three Gospels, they tell the same story. All right, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they tell the same story from different perspectives. They're called synoptic Gospels. They tell the same story, three different offers, three different life experiences, but one Holy Spirit. So they'll describe the same story in different ways, using their intellect, their life experience, and sometimes it's good to read a couple of them, because I I'm, I'm glad I read that about Mark, read that in Mark, that it was, she was suffering from different things from different doctors, all right, so, but back to, back to Luke, because that's where we're supposed to be at today. Bible says that uh, she had spent all of her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by an she was broke. She had spent all of her livelihood, man. She, uh, she was in a bad place. It says in verse 44 that she came from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately, let me hear you say immediately, I love that word when it comes up in Scripture, man. Sometimes God don't waste no time. Say immediately again. Immediately. All right, man. Hey, sometimes we, just, we need it to happen right now. Immediately. She went to many doctors. She suffered many things, all right? And then she came to Dr. Jesus. 12 years of going to doctors and being disappointed, 12 years of money, 12 years of serums, 12 years of formulas. But then immediately, say immediately, some of y'all need it immediately today. And God is available to do it for you. 
He really is. Oh, I'm going to get there. I'll get there. <laughs> we got a lot of preachers in the house today. She did. Immediately, having the flow of blood for 12 years, immediately came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? Now listen, man. Say, did we just read that there was a throng of people around. I mean, it was like born a person. Oh, oh she's like, okay. <laughs> there's people everywhere. Right? Who touched me? I can look right here. Look what it says. It says, look what it says. Peter and those with him said, Master. The multitude strong and press you. Peter said, really, Jesus? <laughs> really? Right. Really? All of these people? See, they didn't get. And sometimes we don't get that there's a, a real difference between just bumping into Jesus and touching Jesus. See, there's a casual bumping that takes place here. Some people just come, we just come to church. It's what we do. I've been going to church ever since I was a little kid. My mother brought me. I just, this is a habit. I, I, I go to church. It's what I do. Bump into Jesus. But solely bumping into Jesus doesn't change a lion. It's actively reaching out. Haley. And touching him. It's what we do when we worship. It's what we do when we pray. It's what, he, you know, when, when, when Melissa calls us forward, it moves us beyond. It's stepping out. Yeah, God can meet me in my chair. But if God wants us to call, step closer. He's going to identify her in a minute, all right? She's in a crowd. He's going, to he's going to call her out in a minute. He's going to do that. But God never, Jesus never calls us out or calls us up to embarrass us. Although he knows we're going to be embarrassed, but there's a motive behind it, you know? Come on, I'm going to get to that in a second. But he says, who touched me, all right? And the disciples are, come on, man. Come on, Jesus, really? Who touched you? It says, when, it, when all denied, Peter and those within him said, Master, the multitude strong impress you, and you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me. For I perceive the power going out from me. Yeah, there was, everybody was around me, but somebody made an extra effort and whoop, the power came out of me. Why would he do that? If we look back over at the Mark's account, it said in verse 30 of Mark 5, And Jesus, immediately knowing himself that the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched me? His disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? 
And he looked around to see who had done this thing. He looked around her and probably looking right at her. That's, you, you, you don't get that in Luke, but in Mark, he looked around. It's like he's looking at her and saying, who touched me? Who touched me? Verse 47 says, Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. And she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her daughter, Be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well, go in peace. Why would he front her off like that? Now, there's several reasons why sometimes, hey, I've been in a place, man, where I've, uh, God, has, by his spirit, put me in a place where, man, he, he jams me up. He embarrass, I, embarrass me, but not, never, ever, to embarrass me even better, so something good's going to come out of this. One, and she said that she was here. Jesus wanted her to know, hey, your faith has healed you. Don't just say, no, I'm telling you, yeah, you're healed. Yeah, you think you're healed, but I'm telling you, you are healed. I'm telling you, in case you have a doubt, I'm telling you you're healed. Another reason maybe. Maybe Jesus wanted everybody around to know this lady who the brother just said was unclean, which uh, uh, if she touched anybody, it made them ceremonially unclean. All right, it made them went to where they couldn't do uh, enter into the religious rituals and, and things of, of worship at that time. They could, it didn't totally ruin her life, but it made life harder and more complicated. Kind of like during COVID. Remember if you coughed in a room? <coughs> Boy, people looked at you. This is before we thought, we knew when we thought, man, if you cough, you're going to kill everybody. Remember that? Remember that? <laughs> man, hey man, you wear that mask, forget about it. Man, at work we used to say, don't test, don't tell. <laughs> you know, the people would rather not know that this lady was unclean. They would rather not know that because it complicated their lives too. They don't know. If they don't know that she's ceremonially unclean, then that means they don't know. They're not unclean because they don't know she's unclean. But Jesus wanted everybody who did know, I believe, to know this lady's clean. This lady's clean. Now, remember now, where was she on her way, man? I don't think I'm going to get to Jairus' daughter today. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get there. We might have to go one more week. I didn't think so, but... Hey. <laughs> but, all right, so, he, listen. Listen, you know, Jairus is probably, man, what's going on here? My daughter. My daughter was dying. So in pointing it out, right, and making it known, man, it's giving Jairus some faith. Her faith made her clean, her faith in me and Jairus. If you have faith in me, I'll do the same for you and what I've done for him. I'm telling you. Listen, last week, we don't do it like this at church, but last week we did. Here we go, Pastor Sam, 
right? And people were giving their lives to Jesus. Then he called you out. One by one. Hey, you. Okay, hey, I saw you raise your hand. Come on up here. <laughs> and you. Hey, Sakala. Come on up here. Come on up here. No, we had, he had you all up here. Some of y'all were trying to duck. And you know, this one, he's pointing at you. You know, I saw you. <laughs> and he called you up, right? Man, that was beautiful. Some of y'all were embarrassed. I would be. I've been called out for stuff. I ain't going to lie, man. The preachers have been there, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man, why you got to do that? Especially when I'm the pastor. They're not supposed to know that about me. <laughs> then calling up him, then what it, when he, he did all that, and then afterwards, if it wasn't enough, you looking this way, he turned you around, and now you're looking out at everybody. <laughs> you don't think that moved my faith to see you come up here? You know what that did for your children that may have been praying for you or your husband or your wife? There's a reason we come. There's a reason we ask you to take that step. There's a reason we have altar. We, church, church, this church is being built around this altar, God bringing healing. Yes, he can move. Listen, he can move where you're at, but if being embarrassed is keeping you from moving up and touching Jesus, then your pride is your God. Your pride. And you don't want to be embarrassed. That's your pride. I say give your pride to Jesus and watch what happens. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Right? So come, man, there's something. Listen, I always say God doesn't pour his fire out on an empty altar. Bring him out. Come on, don't be afraid. He said, well, I don't want to become a freak. Jesus freak. Well, you know what I say. Jesus don't take people and turn them into freaks. He takes freaks and turns them into people. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. When the woman saw that, she was not hidden. She came trembling, falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people and the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, why did he call her out? I believe, man, all of those other reasons were good. Hey, to confirm, I've done this for you. So the people around could see that she, Jesus said, she's unclean now. No doubt the people around might have known. Maybe it was for Jairus too. For him to see a hurt faith, maybe it was, but I think. This lady who had just been pretty much an outcast, living on the outskirts of people. Instead of un being, oh, she's unclean. He gave her a new name. And nowhere you read through the scriptures, I to kind of scan through the New Testament trying to find another person that Jesus gave this new name to, daughter. The only time in the Gospels, the only time, the only person he called daughter was this person who was, others said, was unclean. The love was flowing. Do you think that was healing word to her? Yeah. That's who Jesus is. 
That's what Jesus does. He's willing to be interrupted, man. He'll stop. He'll love on you. He'll embarrass you sometimes if that, but in a, not in a harmful way. He'll make the comfortable uncomfortable. <laughs> and he'll discomfort the comfortable. <laughs> and comforts the discomfort. That lady went away clean. Healed. Now that she wasn't even the star of the story. <laughs> Jesus was on his way somewhere. She was a little bit even, you know, what? she was a little bit superstitious, it looks like. She thought if I could touch his clothes or his the tassels. That's probably another one of the reasons Jesus pointed her out as he wanted to know it wasn't touching her clothes that made her clean. But it was her faith. And so what do you need from Jesus today? Your faith may be weak. You may be thinking, well, if I go to church, I'm going to get better. No, church don't make anybody better. Jesus does. <laughs> Putting your faith in Jesus does. Stephen, I'm going to ask you to come. And, uh, you know, I felt led a little earlier uh, to, to do this, but I think now seems the right, the right time. Uh, You got some things going on in your life. And you came to church for a reason. Great start. Now I'm going to talk specifically. I'm going to make a couple of different calls. And the first one is you need Jesus Christ in your life. You're soul sick. Maybe a guy broke your heart, man. Maybe it was a lady. Maybe your children. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe there's a cancer in your body. Maybe you've been depressed. Maybe you're bipolar like me. Maybe you've reached your wit's end. You need Jesus. You felt him. You got a little scared, but now you're settling down and saying, wait, I, something's going on. I feel something. It's not something, it's someone. Or maybe you knew him. And you walked away. Life is hard. But he's calling you back today calling you back. So either one, this is first call. No, you need Jesus, you know that. You don't, you know, you, you, you're not ready for heaven today. Well, you will be by the time the service is over. And you just want to know him. Who don't want to know Jesus? Who messed you up is what I always say. Who would, man, Jesus is amazing. He's perfect. He's never hurt anybody. All he did was love, love, love. And his love, they crucified him. Who would, man, the people that don't want Jesus, people that don't know him, don't get it. You were, somebody told you something. Yo te va a castigar. God's going to punish you. God is mean. God is old. God is irrelevant. No, Jesus is beautiful. And two groups of people, I want you to stand up. One, you don't know Jesus. Never knew him. But man, something, he's moving you, something brought you. 
And that other group of people, those of you who have fallen away from Jesus, I mean, you, you fell away. He don't know. He didn't fall away. He's still Jesus. He still loves you. He's still. I want you to stand up right now where you're at. Come on. Don't let your pride keep you away from Jesus today. If you don't stand up here, you ain't going to stand up outside. All right. Come on up here, friend. Come on. Come on. Come. There are others. Come on. Come on. There you see. Come on, let's give them a hand. There are others that are coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's get our pastors up here. All right, let's get our pastors. We've got someone right here. Right? There are people either coming back. But we're not done. All right, because, hey, right now you're in the middle of the crowd and you just want to touch Jesus. Maybe there's a sickness in your body. Maybe it's a broken heart. Maybe your soul is sick and you just want one of our church pastors or leaders to pray for you. Maybe you've just been bumping into Jesus, but today you say, no, man, I'm going to be like that lady. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to get out of my comfort zone. I'm going to get out of my seat. And I'm going to say, no, man, I need a touch. I want to touch Jesus today. I want you to come. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stand up and come. Don't let your pride keep you in your chair. Man, there's miracles waiting to happen. There's a miracle waiting for you right now. Come. You could be out in the foyer. You could be out in one of the seats. But come. We want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask our church leaders to come, my staff and leaders to come and stand up here with me. Stand up here with me. Church staff, leaders to come with me. Richard, you can come. If you need prayer for anything, for anything. Brother Albert, come on up here. Brother, I need, need, I need your help to pray for people too, man. Come right on up here. This song says, you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone, may my spirit. Man, maybe your fire is going out. You need the fuego of Dios. Come on, let us pray for you. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to I'm going to ask you to stand. Stephen's going to lead us in this song, through the song one time. This is going to conclude the formal part of our service. The altars are open. We'd love to pray for you today. Song says, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after thee. As the deer panteth for the water so my soul longeth after Hear the words. Come on, sing it, everybody. Let's sing it. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. Come on, sing as a deer, as a deer. As a deer panteth the water so my soul longeth after thee. And you alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone. You Come on, sing it, church, with a big heart. To you alone, may my spirit heal. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You're my friend and you are 
my brother is.